Today on Always Hungry, we're gonna be making a spicy bucatini lobster. Let's get started. While the water is boiling, let's get our lobsters ready for a nice little bath. As you can see, they're very much alive. And the least cruel way of doing it is killing them first, because no one wants to be boiled alive, right? So what you want to do is at the point of your knife, you want to find the middle of the head here with a confident tap on the knife, and that's going to end his life on the spot. I always pray for the lobster gods and, thank, and say thanks to the lobster for giving his life for a delicious meal. And now your life has come to an end. Like so, knife in the middle, and then... There you go, that's it. She's done. Next step, we're gonna separate the claws from the tails since it takes different time to cook. So let's get started. Like this, like this. There you go. Look at the beautiful meat here. Okay, same for this guy. Okay, off. There you go, we have our, our claws, our heads, and our tails. Good to go. So a good trick to keep your tails nice and straight while cooking, so they don't curl up, is to use a, could be a bamboo stick or a metal skewer. And you're gonna insert this thing right in the middle of the tail that is still moving. And all the way down like this. And that's gonna make it uh, cook nice, evenly, and straight. All right, so we got our water boiling. Now, we're gonna season heavily with salt, with coarse salt. It should taste like the ocean, so don't be shy on the salt. It's your only chance to season your lobster. You can always taste the water to see if it's seasoned enough. So the claws are gonna go in for five minutes. So it's been one and a half minutes for the claws. Now we can go ahead and dip the tails in there. This, you can even leave them on the skewer so it's gonna be easier to pull out. And then three minutes and a half and we're done. While we wait, we are gonna get our ice bath ready for the lobsters. Because we wanna stop the cooking process as soon as they're done. Timer's up. So now we're gonna pull our lobsters out of the water and get them an ice bath right away to stop the cooking process. There you go. And next, the claws. Make sure they're very well submerged in the water. As so, like so. And the last one, and not the least. There you go. That's done. So our lobsters have been sitting in the water for five minutes. They're fully cooled down. Now it's time to clean them up and get the meat out. So we're gonna start with the tails. So a good trick I have that I like to use is uh, with the palm of my hand here, I'll just crack the lobster like this. You feel the crack. You'll hear it, like this, like this, and then you can easily open it like this, like this, and the meat should pull out quite easily. And now here you want to be careful, get all the meat from there as well. There you go. And here you have it, a beautiful lobster tail. We're gonna keep all the shells for the sauce, so don't discard those. Now the trickiest part, the claws. We'll start with a biggie. Oh, that's a biggie. Now, this is an art. There's many ways to do this. I like to use a knife, like a big knife like this one, and then, we're gonna crack it on all surfaces, like this. It 
It's gonna make a mess, but you know, the price to pay. There you go, nice full crack. And then we're gonna take this little claw here and gently crack it like so. And then you wanna be very, very carefully removing this part to keep it intact. Take your time, there's no rush, unless you're in a rush. There you go, look at that. Again, we're gonna keep those. <laughs> Let me see. Thank you. Thank you. And now this should be also be very easy to pull out. There you go. And now gently just pull it out like this and you should get a beautiful claw. Wow, look at this. Oh. There you go. There you have it. So we're gonna put our little claws right next to our tails here. Again, keep this deliciousness uh, and now my favorite part the knuckles don't throw those away they're full of delicious meat so what you're gonna do is crack them in two like this start with and I really like to use scissors for this part kind of just like get it open very easily on both sides There you go, and you can just open it up like this and pull all the meat from your knuckles. There you go. One here. Same for this guy. Scissors, both sides. There you go, and you can just open it up and pull the meat right out. There you go. Knuckle meat, done. So we're done picking lobster meat out of the shells. Uh, we have all the cooked shells here. We have the uncooked lobster heads here, and we're gonna use this for the sauce, so do not discard those. Now what we can do is get our lobster meat ready for the pasta. So I'll just uh, slice them first in here, in the middle, like this. And this way we can look if there's anything to remove inside. These are nice and clean, that's perfect. Same for this one here, just right in the middle. Look at that beautiful flesh, beautiful. And now for these, we're just gonna kind of like chop these in chunks, not too small. We want some bite. Like this, like this, like this. And you know, it's always good to taste your product, right? So, mm, always good, it's good stuff. There's some beautiful chunks in there. And um, we're gonna keep one of these guys intact just for final plating. So this can stay on here. These we're gonna chop also very roughly. This, this, and this. And these always have this cartilage in the middle that you do wanna remove, like this. see here this thing absolutely need to get the fuck out of there there you go there you have it oh. mm. Oops. also goes in the soup there you go in the broth and then this we can chop as well this now it's time for sauce we're gonna do a classic bisque lobster style so we're gonna start by sweating off our carcasses, our lobster shells. So, high heat. While our pot is, uh, is heating up, we're gonna take care of our vegetables here. We have a classic mirepoix, but we also have a nice, beautiful hot pepper in there. Gonna give a nice little kick to our sauce. Let's get started. So we're gonna peel one large onion. So. This. Our pot's very hot. I'm gonna put some olive oil in there. Generous amount. 
We're also gonna add a big nub of butter in there. And then we're gonna put our carcasses, our lobster shells, lobster heads right in there. And then everything else goes. There we go. There we go. So we're gonna cook our lobster shells for six, eight minutes on medium low heat. And uh, we're gonna prepare our vegetables while this is cooking. So we can just roughly chop your onion like this. We're gonna do two celery stalks. Also roughly chop. Make sure everything is uh, cooking evenly. There you go. The smell here is amazing. And we're gonna use one carrot. You don't have to peel it, but uh, I like to peel it, so I'll just peel it. There you go. Also, chop it roughly. All right, so it's been six minutes. We can now add our vegetables in there. There you go. Next. We're gonna put some garlic in there. One garlic head, we're gonna chop it like this. Like this. And then just, uh, just peel those. You can leave them whole or just chop them roughly. I'll just leave those whole. And you can kind of just put them as you go. And the reason why we're peeling everything is because we're gonna blend this whole thing afterwards, so. That's why. That's why. Right, make sure we mix everything well. Next step, we're gonna add a beautiful chili here. We're just gonna cut it in half. Take the stem off. There you go. Roughly chop. Chili in. So I have some beautiful parsley stems here, which is I put that right on top. There you go. This and this. I have some fresh thyme also in. Couple of bay leaves, fresh bay leaves right in there. I'm just gonna build like a little well in the middle of our pot here, such as this and tomato paste. We're gonna put it in the middle so it can cook a little bit because nothing worse than the raw taste of tomato paste. There you go. So always cook it down. So right in the middle. There you go. That's gonna give a nice richness and a nice color to our broth and also a nice acidity. So we can cook that down for two or three minutes like this and mix it all in. There you go. The smell again is unreal. Unreal! Next step, we're gonna bring the brandy in and we're gonna flambe this thing. So careful for your eyebrows here, guys. So there you go, brandy. Woo! Oh yeah. Now next step, some good white wine in there. Doesn't have to be good, but you know, if it's good, it's probably gonna taste better, so that's what I say. And now some white wine, generously. And one for the chef. So now we can leave the, uh, we can let the wine reduce to almost one quarter. Wow, the smell and the color is just incredible. 
So our wine has reduced almost all the way down. We add some cold water, uh, just at the, at the level of where the shells are. So pretty much all the way up. A little bit more. Perfect. You don't want to add too much water because you want this beautiful juice to be highly concentrated in lobster flavor. And uh, we're going to bring that to a simmer and then cook that for another 20, 25 minutes. And then we're going to blitz it, strain it, and we're good to go. Next step, we're going to do our garnish for the pasta. It's going to be just a nice toasted breadcrumb, a bunch of butter, panko, and be a nice little crunchy texture on top because we don't do cheese with pasta, with seafood pasta. That's a big no-no. Butter in the pan. So it's almost like a, like a fried breadcrumb, so don't be shy on the butter. You want to soak that breadcrumb in there. You can also use a larger pan, but you know what? I'm an expert, so I go to a small one. Now, butter's all melted. Breadcrumb in. And now you want you just toss around, toast it nicely, and uh, and uh, with a wood spatula, just make sure you constantly toss that around so it toasts evenly, like so. There you go. There you go. That's the motion. That's the motion, guys. And make sure you put a bunch on your stove because that's cool too. You know. You can also do that step in the oven, but you know, it's not as fun as doing this. So we're gonna do this on medium low heat for maybe four, five, six minutes um, until it's just nice, golden and crispy. That's why you need a good amount of butter because it'll probably burn before it gets toasted if you don't put enough butter in there. So our panko is good to go. You can just put it here on a little tray to stop cooking. There you go. So our stock's been simmering for 20 minutes. We're gonna add some beautiful fresh tomatoes. I'm just gonna cut these in, uh, in six, roughly. I like to add those later because they keep a nice acidity, a nice freshness to the stock. Make sure you use some very nice and ripe tomatoes like these. And you can just cut these like this, roughly. Your salon, cool. go. Add these right in. There you go. Perfect. So our sauce is almost ready to go. We're gonna get some water to boil for the pasta. There you go. Boom. Our sauce is pretty much done now. We're gonna stuff this and we're gonna go to the blender here. Oh, look at those colors. Oh, wow, it smells so good. So this step might be weird for some, but we're gonna blend everything, shells included. We're only gonna remove the bay leaves and uh, we're gonna blend everything and that's how you can extract a maximum of flavor in your sauce. Obviously, you need a decent blender. I use a Vitamix because Nothing can survive it, but uh, yeah, so we'll go with the uh, little tweezers here. We're gonna do the shells first. So shells in. The heads. There you go. Just jam that in there. Tack. Tack. You can also do it in uh, multiple batches. I'm just gonna try to jam it as much as I can because I'm a psychopath. That's why I roll. And then obviously you need some liquid to blitz that stuff up. So uh, it's gonna be easier if I just put all the shells in. I'm gonna discard all the bay leaves also. One bay leaf. One bay leaf. Oh, more shells. There we go. Not a really fear. Probably some more. Also, the time you can discard the time as well. Full disclosure: I've never done this before, so it might be a disaster, or it might go according to plan. But we're about to find out. You could probably put less in there, but you know, 
I like to live dangerously. So to make this possible to blitz, we need some liquid in there. Oh, more time. The cat here. So we're gonna add some liquid in there. Then some stuff. There we go. I would definitely suggest doing this in two batches at home. But uh, you know, someone's gotta try, right? So I'll be the guinea pig here. All right, moment of truth. Let's try this thing here. Like I said, it's pretty much full, but uh, we'll give it a try. So on here, and then slowly. There you go. I mean, it's blitzing, right? All right, so it did work. Now we obviously gotta strain this through a fine mesh. And right now it's more of a puree because there's still a bunch of liquid left in there. So what we're gonna do is do a first strain in here. Gonna be the base. And now the key is to just to kind of like force this thing through the strainer so you get the beautiful liquid that's gonna be left and all the all the sheets that are gonna stay in the strainer. See already that beautiful broth in there? That's packed with flavor. Alright, so it's quite the workout, but once you're done, you're left with this lobster shell paste, which is good for the garbage. So this you can discard, and what's left in your pot here is some liquid gold, my friends. Okay, so we are done straining our beautiful lobster broth, and now we're gonna put it back in here. Make sure everything is mixed, oh my God. Oh my God. Mix properly, and also we're gonna incorporate the cream in the blender. So we're gonna add a cup of heavy cream in there before we blitz it back, and then we can blend. There we go. And now we can do a second strain just to make sure we have just a liquid gold in there, like this. Oh, look at that. That's liquid gold right there. Woo! Then with a spoon like that. My God. Mamma mia. We're gonna chop some nice little chives here for the final plating. So we're gonna have the breadcrumbs, the, pan the toasted panko, and the chives. So just make sure you take your time to make it super nice and fine, as I'm doing right now. Take your time, or do it fast if you're a machine. So again, for pasta, always make sure your water tastes like the ocean, so heavy on the salt. Coarse salt, sea salt. Go one, and a small one. Like I said earlier, you can always test, try, uh, taste your water. If it's missing some, add some more, so you might as well put less first and add some more, because if you have too much, you can't take it out. So here, we have a beautiful, this is not a paid sponsorship, just beautiful bucatini. Always get the good semolina pasta. One good trick to know if it's good pasta or no, is the cooking time. The higher the cooking time is, the most likely it's a good quality pasta made from semolina flour. These are gonna take 30 minutes to cook. It's the good stuff. So probably gonna do, uh, probably gonna do uh, half this pack, I would say. This is a good amount. So, pasta in the water. Let's go. There you go. Scratch that, I'm gonna do all the pasta. Uh, 
All right, so now our lobster sauce is simmering. We're gonna add our lobster meat in there, like this. And you wanna turn the heat off, because you wanna keep cooking the lobster further, as it's already perfect. There you go. And now you can mix that up nicely. And we'll just be waiting for our pasta to be cooked to come join the party. There you go. There you go. So our pastas are cooked. It's now time to transfer the bucatini into the sauce. So we're gonna go carefully like this. And in she goes. There you go. Gotta make a big patch, you know? I gotta feed the friends, feed the neighbors, feed the family, feed the dog if you have one. Whoever is hungry, you gotta feed the need. You gotta feed the filmer, you know? You gotta eat too. And now we are just gently gonna mix everything together. And look at that. So now we just wanna slightly cook this in the sauce to make sure the pasta has fully absorbed flavor of this beautiful lobster sauce. Gently, oh my God. Just to finish with a beautiful gloss, we're gonna add some cold butter in there. Like this, with your fingers, it's fine, it's fine. Let's go. And the heat is off, now it's fitting time. So, in a nice plate, oh, that's very hot. There you go, okay. Like this, we have our chives here, our breadcrumb. And we're gonna try to make this nice. So at this point, you can get fancy and do like a little twirl with the little tweezers and the thing. But you know what, I like pasta, rustic, so I'm gonna do it rustic. There you go. So, pasta in. Do a generous plate because you know we're hungry. We're hungry boys. And then make sure you get a lot of lobster meat on top as well, because you know it's lobster pasta after all. But if you do want to get very fancy with it, you can add that beautiful claw that I kept for the plating. But look at all those lobster chunks in there, it's absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And now, we can add our beautiful lobster claw right on top, like this. This little friend right there. And this can go in my mouth. And to finish, garnish with a beautiful toasted breadcrumb for this little texture. generously and some chives and if you're crazy like me you can even finish with a nice little olive oil for a nice little glaze there you go and here you have it lobster bugatini hey And now, my favorite part, test this beautiful lobster pasta. Let's do it. I'm gonna get it right in there. A nice lobster. Oh, mamma mia. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Mm. So here we are, lobster bucatini for the full recipe. Scroll down, it's gonna be in the description below. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that bell, to make sure you don't miss the next video. We're out.
Peace.